Could you help Ben Simmons? How would you help Ben Simmons? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I definitely could help him. Um, one, you, you people think about shooting as, as some talent that, that, you know, some of the best that's ever done it has. But it's just really just getting in there. And, you, you know, in your mind, you have to think about the game. You have to think about, you know, visualizing, you know, what it is that you want to do, uh, what you foresee in your free throws. So you have to have a mindset to think about these things and then kind of absorb it and then do it. And so, you know, having the right conversations first and foremost is important for him and anybody that struggles with shooting. And then it's like we have the saying, like if you have a full cup, when you, you walk into a crowd, somebody tries to pour something in your cup, you can't receive anything more because you're already filled. So he's got to come to the table with an empty cup and be willing to take all this information, you know, for whatever he's thought about shooting, kind of strip away and break all it down and kind of rebuild uh, back up. Because, you know, one thing it's, you know, how you hold the ball in your hands, it's got to be in your fingertips so you don't have a push shot. And you have to shoot shots that you know you're going to be tested on in, in a game. You know, if you think about a fourth quarter scenario with somebody running out at you, how is that lift on your jump shot going to look? What that what is that release going to look like? And that's what you have to practice when you're in the gym by yourself. Because, you know, far too often when I walk in the gym, I see kids just up there just shooting with their upper body. And then it doesn't stand when you come into a game situation because now you have to measure a different release point. And so, you know, with Ben, a lot of people are running out, out, out at him and they're testing him to make that shot. So that was that is where I would put him in, in, a, in a, uh, a gym environment, a work situation, and have him shoot under duress. But and how's his form, there. though, Ray? Is, would you mess with his form? I don't think there's anything wrong with his form. And, and what you have to remember, you know, the, one of the greatest shooters I've ever seen in Reggie Miller, you know, he doesn't have form that was taught, you know, by any means. When I first got into the league, I thought to myself, I was like, well, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to know what it is that you're working with. So with Ben, it, you know, it's not a form thing. It's about explaining to him what it is that he's doing when he's missing and where he wants his energy to come from. Like he's got to flow through it. He's a big guy. Like when he shoots and he extends, like shooting comes from your feet all the way through your body. And then as you release the ball uh, at your fingertips, it's not just the heave here. It's it's all one motion. So that's why for some of the, the, the best shooters in the world and, and, and those that make it look so easy, that's why it just looks like a fit flick, because you're using the motion from from your toes all the way through your fingertips. Can you step back just a little bit on camera and, and show the audience what you mean when you're saying like, because a lot of people, you, you know, you just practice the jumper up here up top. And yeah. and what you're saying, like Trey Young and Steph Curry aren't big guys. But they yeah. they utilize their legs so well. So can you stand up and just show us what what like where you're if you're watching on uh, radio or listening on radio? We apologize. So all right, so show so, me what you mean. So you know when you look at Steph, Steph and Trey, they do have more of a push shot. So when you when you come down, even my shot, I, I come from here, and then I go up, and my motion pushes me and pulls me, and I shoot the ball and release. So it's just uh, a flick. So you, when you see guys coming in transition as they run and then they stop, you see a lot of people kill their, their, their energy or the motion and they just push right here. Mm -hmm. So what I want to get guys to understand is when they run and then they take off, don't let that, uh, that energy, that inertia die at your feet, at your lower body and where they just start pushing with their upper body. And so it's important. It, it, and I'm also wondering about this, Ray. It feels like you're seeing shooters maybe down a little bit lower, whereas we were taught to be a little bit higher with the release point. These longer shots, it feels like these guys, yeah, they're starting down at their chest. Like, are you teaching yeah. that to your your kids? Well, I, one of the things that's fascinating, even with my son Walker, this is where his shot is and his release is so low because you have to remember, for them, the ball is bigger. So they have to use more muscle and more of their body to get the ball up. And they're not in their wrists with the shot. So it, it's super important to kind of gauge. That's why everybody, you know, I put videos of my sons up when I'm working them out over the summer. And, you know, the younger ones, I don't mess with their jump shot because they'll get on the trampoline because they have a hoop on their trampoline with a small ball and they'll shoot it just like this. 
in perfect form, rotation, everything. But when they get the big ball, they have to push it from here because they don't have the strength. And then what happens is, as the kid gets older, this is where their release is because they haven't evolved and, you know, reconstructed where their jump shot is, just where they're comfortable. So that that's what I think happens with a lot of kids in, in their jump shooting is that they shoot one way when they're younger to get the ball up and they heave it and they never change or get to their somewhat teenage years to their adult body where they're shooting the shot that is conducive to them being now strong enough. So I tell all the kids I'm in the gym with, I said, listen, you're not in middle school anymore. You have the strength in your wrists. And what I do is I'll put them on the, their knees on the, on the court and I'll have them first wheels walk in the gym with the ball in your fingertips underneath the basket. And you just, I let them see that this is all you need. And then, then I'll let them get on their knees on the floor and then shoot from there and then just let them work on that right there. Because this, this is all you need right here. If you're using your body, this is, it's not a, a heave. Yeah. You see a lot of people using their shoulders and lower, their lower body to try to get the ball up there. And that's where form goes bad. And then if you take that bad form, that's why it's, a lot of people end up not being able to shoot. 